with us today and for sharing your story. Hunter, for six seasons, you played the role of Tyler on The Bold and the Beautiful. How did the offer to be a part of the uh, Melrose Place show come about? Well, I had done some guest spots for Spelling on Burke's Law, and um, they were very pleased with my work. I was sent a bottle of champagne and flowers and a handwritten card saying, please stay in touch. And uh, they told my agents, as soon as her contract is over on Bold and Beautiful, we would like to speak to her about availability for something on one of our shows. So as soon as that came up this last January, we said the contract is up in January, in, I'm sorry, in June, and that uh, she'll be available. If there's anything that comes up, let her know. In the meantime, I was auditioning for things. And I was given a role, offered a role, rather, for Daytona Beach, which is a Disney pilot that's coming up. And... Uh, Spelling heard about it, and so they outbid them and kept me from signing that contract and hired me on Melrose Place with an unnamed character. There was no character ever created. They just wanted to reserve me so that I wouldn't join another show. But they didn't have a character for you to play? No. Okay. Uh, spelling Television is claiming that the role was for the part of a mistress? That was never said to me. So there wasn't a role. If it hadn't it was been never created, a role. it couldn't in be a In fact, part. for like six weeks, we kept calling and saying, what is the role? And to go even further, twice I turned them down because I, I didn't want to accept just any role. I mean, I mean, what right. would I want to play a prostitute for four years or five years or whatever because that's how long it, the contract would be. So I wanted to know what kind of character I would be taking my career with such a big leap to go into prime time. What kind of character would I be stuck with? For that long and of course they couldn't tell me okay hunter shortly after the contract was signed you discovered you were pregnant now did you keep it a secret or did you tell the producers right away i found out that i was pregnant approximately only three weeks into the pregnancy which was about the end of march since there was no role even created right I, the, what i finally came up with i thought i will let them know as soon as i can because that will give them three months. Now, we're find talking a... about back in March I found this out. Uh, that would give them until the show began in July for me to start shooting to figure out, well, do we want to write it in, write it out, give her a character that can hide behind furniture, you know, whatever. How were you notified that you were being terminated from Melrose Place before it even began? I was just sent a letter. Um, whereas before, I mean, communication was going on with telephones, this, that, and the other. I was just sent a cold letter stating uh, that... We have a portion <coughs> of that letter from Spelling Television, and I'd like to read a portion of it. Dear Ms. Tylo, Spelling Television Incorporated has been advised by your representatives that you are pregnant. Although we wish you much joy in this event, your pregnancy will result in a material change in your appearance during production. You're still being discriminated against for being pregnant. I would like to introduce you to Tina. Tina had just landed a top job at one of Hawaii's hottest nightclubs, and everything seemed to be going her way until she discovered she was pregnant. That's when she said things changed. Tina, what happened? Well, I was working for a hotel in Hawaii, and the manager was leaving to open a new nightclub, and he'd had about 60 applicants for each position. And I wasn't one of them, but he asked me to come and work for him because I would fill out the uniform nicely. And this was a nightclub in which the were they waitresses or hostesses? They were cocktail waitresses. Cocktail waitresses. Yes. What did they wear in this nightclub? Um, the outfits that we wore were little black halter dresses that were low cut, um, came up to about here, <laughs> uh, very skinny, or high cut, basic, or, yeah, <laughs> low and high. Um, and basically he said that I probably wasn't the most qualified waitress, but I would look the best in the uniform, so he wanted me to work for him. And everything was going really good for a couple of months. I worked there, and then I found out I was pregnant. And my mother warned me against telling my boss, but he was a good friend of mine. We drove to work together every day. I'd worked for him for a long time, and I thought he would never do anything to me. But I was wrong. Um, about a week after I told him, I got a cold and another girl was supposed to cover my shift and she didn't show up and she was fired as a result of that. A couple of days later she was rehired and I was fired. The reason that I was given was that, well, after all you are pregnant, you aren't going to be here too long anyway. We need someone we can depend on. Someone has to lose their job, therefore it's you. 
and that was basically the end of that. Um, I wonder I what Gloria would say if it's a <laughs> restaurant chain like Hooters and suddenly, and, and they wear those, <laughs> those, or almost wear those things. I would say to all of the employers, pregnancy is not a crime. It is not a communicable disease. It is not a condition of which a woman should be ashamed. And no woman in this country should lose her job simply because she is pregnant. Let's, uh, let's meet Francine, if that's possible. Francine, what happened to you? Well, Sally, I was working for some doctors. I started their laboratory. I got it going. I got it started. And I was working there for a while, very hard for them. And I found that I was pregnant. I was really happy about it. And I went to tell them and also to tell them that I would keep continuing to work for them. And uh, the reaction I got was really not what I expected. It was, you betrayed us. How could you do this to us? And these were doctors. They used the word betrayed? Betrayed, yes. And they were not joking. They oh, used they the word betrayed. They use the word betray. Yes. How could you betray us like <laughs> By this? Getting we pregnant. needed you. 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 And I said, but I'm still working for you. Oh, but you know, you have to go on maternity leave, and we have to find someone who's going to do your job, and you know, you have to doctor's appointments you're going to have to go to, and so forth. Yeah. So what happened? Well, I, I continued working for them, you know, and uh, things were going along pretty good, okay, until um, they finally decided to hire somebody to replace me temporarily while I was supposed to be on maternity leave. And that's kind of when, when things started to go crazy. Um, she decided that this girl that she wanted my job, so she started lying and saying that I was, you know, coming in to late work late, excuse me, and not doing my job. And they kind of took her word for it, and they locked me out of my office one day. They changed the locks <laughs> on me so that I couldn't get into my office. And this is the point, Sally, is we have to start teaching employers a lesson. We have to start teaching them that they cannot punish the employees who get pregnant. They cannot economically punish them. They should not emotionally punish them. And the only way they're going to understand is when we file lawsuits against them and let them know that. Yeah. Did you uh, take legal action of any kind? I tried, Sally. I, I had, after they changed the locks on me, I, I realized I had had enough, and I went home and I called lawyers and I looked and nobody would help me. Everybody said, "Well, we don't handle this case. Try someone else." And I tried and tried and couldn't the, find was anyone. It was your opinion, and I'm just asking your opinion, uh -huh. uh, that they did not want to sue doctors. <laughs> Sometimes lawyers I don't, are yeah, a little. Yeah, I don't know. What about you? Did you take any legal action? No, I didn't. Um, I was basically too afraid to. I worked for very powerful people. Yes. Stand. Sally, that's part of the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing because. Women like these young ladies here are so cheated and they don't have the public voice and they're not able to go make people aware that this still goes on. They're not able to do that. I'm able to do that. I'm putting a lot on the line, but I'm doing it. She's fired because her boss felt it was best to stay at home and be a mother instead of continuing with her career. He believed she was a undependable employee based on the fact that she was a mommy. It's a little hard to believe that somebody would be that dumb <laughs> to say that, but uh, it, did it happen, Lisa? Yeah, it sure did. Um, I... Now, let's go to the, let's, let's state the, the state, because I assume in some way state laws have something to do with um, this. This was in Virginia. Virginia, okay. And um, I... I had been with the company for five years. Um, I had put a lot of effort into my job. I, you know, I felt that I did my job properly. Um, what kind of company? What nature of company? You it was a small family-owned business. They rented construction equipment, sold it, serviced okay. it, that type of thing. Um, I had been with them. You know, I had. I felt like I was part of the family, and. Um, when I found out I was pregnant, I was ecstatic because I have always wanted to have a child. And when I found out I was, everybody knew really before I really knew because we had talked about it and when I went to the doctor we had confirmed it and everything. And, you know, I had told them and it was like, it was never a happiness or it never was a problem either way. It was just known that I was pregnant and everything. And I went through, you know, my pregnancy and did my job. I was there. I, some mornings I was sick and I did have to come in late, you know, I, but I did come in and finish my day. Um, I did the best of my, to my ability. And 
I had worked up until 32 weeks and I was at work one day and I just didn't feel good. I didn't feel comfortable. I felt real tired all day and I was having some cramps and stuff like that and I told the lady that I work with that I thought maybe I had ca should call the doctor and talk to them. Maybe something was wrong and I left from work and went to the doctor and I went to the doctor's office and they told me I was in labor. I mean, I just couldn't believe it. So they recommended bed rest and that with your pregnancy leave became 11 weeks. Yes. Were you paid during those 11 weeks? No, I was not. You were not. What happened when you were ready to return to work? Well, when I went for my six week checkup and um, the doctor released me, he said it was okay to go back to work. That afternoon when I got home, I picked up the phone, I called him, I said, um, you know, I'm ready to come back to work. Would you prefer me to start on a Monday or would you prefer me to start on the day that our pay period begins? And um, he hesitated and kind of questioned me about different things and everything. And I asked him, I said, is there a problem? You know, if there's a problem, tell me. And um, he said that um, he needed a dependable employee and that he did not feel that I would be dependable because I had a child and if she got sick that he would have to let <coughs> me leave. And um, I, I just couldn't Let, believe Let's go it. over that again. He did not think you could be dependable because children get sick. And I would have to leave And work. you would have to leave. Oh. So, you see, that's exactly what the, uh, the Civil Rights Act and the laws against pregnancy discrimination have been designed to prevent. That kind of sex stereotyping, the assumption that because women are going to be mothers, they're going to be undependable and they're not going to be able to do that job. That is not an assumption that is made about fathers. It shouldn't be made about mothers. Right. And that is unlawful. <laughs> Lisa. Lisa, by the way, Christian, you believe there are differences in the cases and can what actually be called pregnancy discrimination. That's correct, Sally. Would I, you have <clears throat> taken her case? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> it's a good case. It's a good case it's for a good publicity. Case. It's an excellent case. If she's you were going to argue against... Publicity. The lawyer is going to get a lot of publicity, and I think it's great. And she's going to make a very important point that being pregnant is not a disease. And there's no reason... <laughs> And why you shouldn't be able to work if you're pregnant. But As is a matter this pregnancy of pregnancy discrimination. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether we're going. I, I haven't seen the contract. Right. But before I answer that question, and I will, I'd like to say this: that I have two sons, and I worked as a trial attorney and handled cases right up until the time that I went into labor with each of my sons, and that was 35 and 40 years ago. So that you can do anything that you want to do when you're pregnant. The problem is, however, that if, and this is what we don't know in this case, if she was hired for a specific role, and we haven't seen the contract or the correspondence, if she was hired for a specific role, and if she was supposed to be the svelte mistress of someone on the show, I don't think that she can say that because she's pregnant, she's being discriminated against. Now, how this particular production company handled the firing, handled the contract, and will ultimately handle any settlement or lawsuit, I don't know. But I think in each of these cases, you've got different sorts of cases. For example, in the lady next to me, the fact that she's a mother doesn't mean she can't handle her job. The fact that she's pregnant doesn't mean she can't handle her job. She can work in the job that she was supposed to work at. But if she were a model and her body depend and her job depended on uh, We went from a cocktail waitress to two people who are uh, living that big American dream. You were both fired? Yes, we were. Basically because you were fired basically because your wife was pregnant. Yeah, I was terminated. Can you explain that? Well, I was terminated five minutes after she was terminated. Um, without going into great detail, Sarah's, uh, once she announced that she was pregnant very soon after that she was terminated and I was terminated right after that. Uh, we went from a dual income at, at one company to zero in one day. On what grounds would they, what do you feel is their reason for terminating you because your wife was pregnant? Well, based on some things that we heard from uh, other employees, they, they couldn't face me. They, matter of fact, at the actual termination, a um, person said that uh, it would be best for all concerned if you, if you were to let go right now. Did you hire a lawyer? Yes, yes we, we did. did. Did the research the lawyer 
did find that there was reason for this? Were there well, other no. people fired because they were pregnant? Well, what happened was is that we were courted by this company. We were living in Manhattan, and we were courted by this company. Um, we wanted to move down to Virginia because I had family. And what we did is we were a vice president of sales. I was vice president of sales and marketing, and Scott was vice president of operations. For one and a half years, we built that company. We got bonuses. We had increases. And they knew that we eventually wanted to start a family. I was tested for um, rubella, and I did not have enough antibodies in my system, so I had to get a vaccination. To build up those antibodies, I would have to be, um, for three months, not try not to conceive. When they found out that that was going on, they basically said they wanted me to hire a manager and clone myself. After I had conceived in September, they said they wanted me to expedite the training. <clears throat> Once I conceived, I told them that I was pregnant, and two weeks before Thanksgiving, they terminated me. Five minutes later, they walked in and they terminated Scott. Did you sue? Yes, we did sue. And, and it turns out that... Um... For me, it underscores the importance of doing your homework about your company and also keeping a paper trail about yourself because I think one of the things is that we have a tendency when we get <clears throat> pregnant, we're so happy. I mean, it's such a great experience. You're so excited. And if you have a good relationship with your boss, you want to run in there and tell him, <laughs> don't do that. I don't mean, my, do it. My advice would be wait at least until after your first trimester. And even at that point, what you should be doing all along the way is keeping track of how you're doing and keep your own records and get that feedback if your annual review isn't going to be for a few months make sure you get it before you tell them you're pregnant so that you have on record what a great job you're doing and that fact that'll is prove that Gloria's point for all the bosses out there yeah. what steps can you take if you're terminated for what you believe is a result of being pregnant well, you know, I, I think that one of the things Gloria's pointed out, Cecile, is that you have to, I mean, if you can't afford to get an attorney, you should get some counsel because it's really worth even just a consultation. The EEOC is, is the place to go if you're going to file a complaint. And, in fact, they will review your case and decide whether, and sometimes they will negotiate for you. I mean, very often an employer really doesn't want to go into a, I mean, they, they would like to settle. I think, you know, the question that came up before is, then do you want to go back and work for that company if they get you reinstated? But you should take some action. I think when you get fired, and in fact, before you do that, try to try to maintain your cool. This is really hard, obviously. <laughs> That's what it is. But I think a lot of people they're so shocked, and then when you need to be clear-headed and you need to know why are you fired.